Hey everybody, this is Ray Harvey for Access Jitsu. This video is going to be an introduction to a series of videos I want to record on building an administrative database. Now there are two approaches I want to follow for some of the functionality, so I thought it would be useful to have an introduction like this so we can map out what we're going to cover and when. So what do I mean by an administrative database? I mean an application that monitors the other databases you're responsible for maintaining. So for instance, we're going to take a look at how to see who and how many people are logged in to which of your databases. We'll look at how to prevent people from logging in and even how to force people to log out so that you can perform maintenance on your databases. We'll also look at how to compact and repair them remotely. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover. Our first topic is going to be monitoring logins and we're going to start with the built-in functionality that Microsoft Access provides us. Microsoft provides a Jet user roster that allow us to see who's logged into a database and some limited information about them such as their machine name and the access user ID if you will which is at this point not terribly useful in version 2007 and forward. Of course with every approach there are some pros and cons. The pros of this one is it's built into access and it's pretty easy to pull the information out. A, a, a drawback if you will though is that as far as identifying people it can only tell you what machine is logged and it can't tell you actually who which person is in there. In order to get a little bit further than that you have to either map a machine name to a person name which again if somebody else is using someone's machine then you really don't know who it was or you have to go a little bit further and uh, use a custom approach which we'll look at in a few minutes. Another drawback to this approach is it depends on what type of database are logged into as to what type of information you get. If you have a combined database where you have both uh, uh, user interface and, and tables in a single database when a person opens that file, Jet User Roster will show you that they are in it just fine. However, if you have a split database, so you have your user interface on a PC or maybe on multiple PCs, and you have a, the back end on a, a network drive, you're going to be forced to try to monitor the back end, I believe, because otherwise uh, you'd have a lot of front ends to try to monitor. So if you're going to monitor the back end, you only see these logins with the Jet User Roster when the person's activity in the front end has them actually open a table in the back end. So for instance you could have somebody with one of your front ends open but if they're idle at the moment and they're using a, not using a form that hits the database you wouldn't know that they're logged in. You only know they're logged in for the few minutes that they're on a form that opens a table in the back end. So that's a, depending upon the type of information you're after that might be a drawback or it might be exactly what you want. You, the next thing we'll look at is preventing logins and again Microsoft has a very very useful tool for this. We'll look at how to use that. There's one small drawback on this one. There's some some bizarre scenarios with multiple people logged in and someone logging out and back in uh, where, where someone can log back in under that situation but that's a very rare occurrence but we're still going to look at an alternative approach that in my opinion is not as useful as the Microsoft provided solution. So next we'll look at a custom solution for both of these that will involve putting some code in the monitor database. We're going to put some of the responsibility of monitoring who's logged in onto the monitoring databases and then our access, our administrative database will then interact with the monitor databases to see who's logged in and when. And we'll do the same thing for preventing logins. There is a drawback to the custom solution for preventing logins and that is you actually have to log in to find out if you can't log in. So in the end I'm going to end up suggesting that we use both the Microsoft provided and a custom solution for preventing logins so we can hit all the different scenarios to keep somebody out. Next we'll take a look at forcing people to log out. Now why would you want to force somebody to log out? Well let's say that you've told everybody okay at 5 o'clock on Thursday I need to perform some maintenance on database XYZ. So 5 o'clock Thursday rolls around you still got three people logged in. So you go ahead and you use your login prevention over here to prevent additional people from logging in. But at 515 you've still got three, three people logged in and you're starting to say okay you know I need to meet you know my significant other and get some dinner. Um, so you're going to want a way to kick these people out. You told them 5 o'clock Thursday you had to do something. Maybe they just forgot or maybe even worse yet they went home and just stayed logged in. This is a custom solution and it involves again putting stuff in the monitor databases. You need to have code in there that you can remotely activate and force those front ends or those databases to kick 
those users out and shut themselves down. And the last thing we'll look at is compacting and repairing databases remotely. So thanks for watching. Look for these videos to be coming very, very soon. I've already built all the code examples for these. I just have to actually get them recorded, edited, and uploaded. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.